Welcome back to BeYoungMinistry.com, to another blog and to another podcast. Welcome to those who access the podcast through Apple Podcasts, Rumble, Spotify, and YouTube. Today we continue in our study of the book of Genesis. We're in chapter 2, verses 10 through 14, which reads, Now a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from there it parted and became four river heads. The name of the first is Pishon. It is the one which skirts the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold, and the gold of that land is good. Bedellium and the onyx stone are there. The name of the second river is Gihon. It is the one which goes around the whole land of Cush. The name of the third river is Hidekel. It is the one which goes toward the east of Assyria. The fourth river is the Euphrates. That's Genesis chapter 2, verses 10 through 14. Today we return to our study of the book of Genesis. The theme of the water of life begins here in the book of Genesis and goes all the way through the book of the Revelation. You will remember that Eden means delight. In today's passage is mentioned areas that were named before the flood occurred. All who lived before the flood knew these areas. They no longer exist as they did before the flood. But at one point they did, and they were known throughout the inhabited world at that time. The river's names are Pishon, meaning increase, Gihon, meaning bursting forth, Hidekel, meaning rapid, or purpose, and Parath, meaning fruitfulness. The proof that this account is no mere myth is that two of the rivers mentioned can still be identified. We have certain geographical landmarks given to us. Remember, this account describes something that existed before the flood had undoubtedly widely changed the surface of the earth. Yet, certain of these rivers can be identified. The Hadekel River is the Tigris River today, and the Euphrates, of course, still bears that name. The two other rivers are perhaps identical with certain streams which still flow. In verses 10 through 12 of today's passage, we read, Now a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from there it parted and became four river heads. The name of the first is Pishon, which is the one which skirts the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold, and the gold of that land is good. Bedellium and the onyx stone are there. Coming out of the Garden of Eden was a river that watered the garden. The first river that flowed out of the garden was full flowing, and it makes sense that God wants us to experience a full flow of his presence and power in our lives. He doesn't want us to be drained, depleted, and deficient. Once it left the garden, it split into four branches. Here we have the mention of the first of these four that flowed out of Eden, and it was named by God the Pishon River. This river's name means to spring up. As was the case with all four rivers, the Pishon River came from one source. Combined with the other three rivers, they together wound their way around the world, speaking to all of the God who made them. Sadly, Many today dismiss the Garden of Eden as a legend or a myth, not being a real historical account. Nevertheless, today's account itself is highly detailed, giving the sense of a historical narrative, not a myth or a legend. Moreover, we do have geographical evidence, as two of the four rivers identified still exist today. In verse 13 of today's passage, we read, The name of the second river is Gihon. It is the one which goes around the whole land of Cush. The second mentioned river was the Gihon River. 
This river's name is based on a verb meaning to burst forth. The previously mentioned land of Havilah is unknown regarding its whereabouts, but it is mentioned four times in the book of Genesis. As mentioned previously, Havilah had gold and precious stones. The land of Cush may refer to a region of modern-day Ethiopia, so that this river would go further to the west. One goes to the south, and one goes toward the west, and it flows west of the Mesopotamian Valley toward modern Ethiopia. If there had only been one full-flowing river coming out of the garden, we might have concluded that all God was concerned about was us experiencing fullness on a personal level. However, if we move beyond fullness and are bursting forth, then the nature and character of God coming out of us is bound to influence and impact others as well. In John 4.14, 4, we read, Anyone who drinks the water I give will never thirst. Not ever. The water I give will be an artesian spring within, gushing fountains of endless life. It would seem that the message of Gihon bursting forth or gushing is that God doesn't want us merely living lives of survival or success, but to move beyond that and truly live lives of significance, not merely focusing on what we need or want for ourselves, but on what we can contribute to others. In verse 14 of today's passage, we read, The name of the third river is Hedekel. It is the one which goes toward the east of Assyria. The fourth river is the Euphrates. The name of the third river was Hedekel, which meant swift or darning, and is actually a word picture of a swift arrow in flight. Before an arrow is ever released from a bow, it is first of all aimed at a target. It has a goal in its sight. The goal in this case is the purpose the Lord gives to every believer every day to be defined by him. When we follow him and are defined by him, it does not matter what happens to us because it has as its design that we know him, that we know him more intimately with each passing day. Hedekel is the name some Assyrian monuments have given to the Tigris River. So the Tigris River flowed east of Assyria. The other two rivers went south and southwest. Of course, the Mediterranean is to the west. And then there is the Euphrates River. Euphrates means sweet or fruitful. Metaphorically, when we have the first three rivers flowing in our lives with fullness, overflow, and purpose, the result is us experiencing sweetness or fruitfulness. The Garden of Eden was a massive garden that God provided for man in his original creation. It had rivers flowing out of it. God had been gracious and kind to Adam. This gave Adam no reason to rebel against God, but he did. Adam rebelled because he had the freedom to choose God or to choose his way. And out of that choice, as we know, Adam chose very unwisely. Adam's unwise choice has rendered the chaos, distrust, and violence that we see throughout our world today. Thank God that the Lord Jesus made the way to reverse these evil effects in our lives for eternity by going to the cross and bearing the payment for our sin which had separated us from God. I trust you have invited him in to your life. These four rivers remind us, believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, that we are God's garden today. And the message and the names of those four original rivers communicate what God wants operative in our lives today.
My friend, God wants you to know him intimately and to go forth and to bear his fruit before a lost and dying world. My friends, I trust this blog and this podcast are helping you in your walk with the Lord. If I can be of further assistance to you, shoot me an email at beyoungministry at gmail.com. Hey, have a great day.